Hi you guys, this is Courtney from Willow's Bloom and today we're going to be talking about the new moon in Cancer that's happening on July 9th at 18 degrees of Cancer. So really quick before I jump into the chart, the overall explanation, um, I did want to mention that I have a new membership called the North Node Society and I basically have a whole astrology course that is worth hundreds of dollars just sitting there for you easy access, just $20 a month, and it's so much more than just an astrology course. Not only can you dive into your chart and learn about where this moon is going to affect you personally and how that might look in your life, but you'll also have live uh, group classes with people where I go over other topics around astrology. Uh, we also have a therapist. I say that in quotes because she's not a therapist, but there's some kind of like counseling service that we do. Again, I don't want to say counseling because I'm not like legally allowed to have therapy or counseling. It's something along those lines. It's kind of like coaching, like spiritual coaching, let's say. So we have a spiritual coach come on each month. We have breath work classes, yoga. There's so many different things that are offered in this membership and I really hope that you'd be interested in joining. So if so, there's a link below and I'll see you guys there. Okay, so we're gonna go over the new moon for all of the zodiac signs, but first we're gonna start off with the overview. So like I said, this moon is happening at 18 degrees of Cancer, which means that if you have a planet at around plus or minus five degrees, uh, 18 degrees of Cancer, then you are going to be strongly affected by this. So this is what I see time and time again with my friends. For the people that don't have this aspecting any of their personal planets, Sometimes these moons come and go and they're just felt a little bit energetically, but nothing in their life happens. Other times when it hits a personal planet by some kind of aspect, square, opposition, sextile, trine, or conjunction, you are going to have something in your life alter, change, manifest, or dissolve away. And new moons are specifically about building something up. So if this is hitting your personal chart, which again, you can find out by joining the membership and uh, taking the course. Um, but yeah, if this is hitting your chart, you'll notice that some new beginnings are being planted. Some new seeds are being planted at this time. And it's going to be another six months for the next full moon in Cancer when you start to see some ripe fruit coming as a result of the actions and things that are happening in your life right now. If you've watched my videos before, then you know I love to use tarot and oracle cards along with the astrology messages because I just feel like they're so intertwined. So I'm definitely going to be um, using those today to kind of describe this moon. So what is a new moon in Cancer about? Well, what I think is it's a lot about new emotional beginnings. Cancer is about us allowing ourselves to feel, allowing ourselves to nurture and mother ourselves, especially because this new moon is making a square to Chiron, which is an asteroid in the sky that has a lot to do with our healing process. And a square is a harsh angle that's indicating that this healing is coming off the back of a challenging situation. And because leading up to this point in time, Venus was opposing Pluto, a lot of those challenging situations are likely regarding our finances, our self-worth, or our relationships, our intimate partnerships with people. And so this healing that's happening is really going to be around some of those issues, and it's probably going to feel like a band-aid is being ripped off so that the skin underneath can finally get a fresh breath of air. And so that's kind of what I see this new moon as being. I don't think it's gonna be the most comfortable new moon, but there are good solutions happening. And what I mean by that is that this new moon is also making a positive angle to Uranus. It's making a sextile to Uranus. Uranus is a planet of finding solutions. It is kind of like our way of thinking outside of the box, of rebelling to create something that doesn't exist that is going to solve our problems, to create change, to disrupt the status quo of what's been happening so we can finally feel some sense of relief or release or freedom. And so that's really what this new moon is about. How are we going to fully express how we feel? By finding some way to create a sense of change in our life to feel more free, to feel like we are can finally be ourselves. So if you've had some relationships or relationship dynamics that have been repetitive or toxic and kind of keeping you stuck in old cycles, the sex cell to Uranus at this moon is asking you to make some changes to those relationships to finally feel like you have some breathing room. So you can finally uh, express your authentic self with somebody who can actually sit and listen and take it in 
and who is a valid person to have a relationship with. Um, I'm going to get more into that for each of the individual signs, but this sextile to Uranus feels very positive. So while there is kind of a lot going on in the sky in general in terms of relationships, money, and self-confidence, this Uranus energy asking us to shake things up, make different decisions, um, completely disrupt something in our life that's been heading on a path that needs to alter, that is the answer. That is the medicine and the remedy within the astrology right now. This new moon is also making a trine to Neptune. So this trine to Neptune is going to make this healing process a little bit easier. It's going to give us basically more universal and spiritual support throughout this process. So if you're looking for divine timing or divine signals or the universe kind of speaking back to you, this is a moon where you're going to feel like you're finally getting some kind of response from the universe if that's something that you normally tuned into. It's also a really great time to express yourself through art and creativity and anything where you feel like you can process emotion in a really cathartic way. So Neptune is that perfect energy, not only for spiritual expression, but artistic expression. So kind of leaning into those areas are going to help uplift you at this time. There's a really wide orb happening with Pluto and a Pluto opposition. So it's a seven degree orb. We're probably not gonna be feeling it that much, but since the Venus opposition to Pluto happened somewhat recently, I did want to bring this in and say that I do see some residual intensity from recent experiences regarding relationships, regarding money, or regarding self-worth, kind of filtering into this current experience. So I do feel like um, some of the, the kind of like childhood shadows that come up around those areas of our life can still be at the forefront while there, I don't see them being like necessarily new situations um, or new realizations, I feel like it's more of uh, the residual of what was just happening. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going on for the moon itself. Now I'm gonna talk about what's happening in the rest of the sky as far as astrology, and then I'll get into some cards that I pulled for this. So we are also experiencing Mercury and Gemini making a trine to Jupiter, retrograde, and Pisces. So Mercury and Gemini is in its home sign. It loves to be there. Jupiter and Pisces loves to be there. They're both really strong in their element. The only thing wrong here is that Jupiter is retrograde. So a lot of this growth and advancement that we're currently working on with Jupiter is going to be very internal. Those abundance and the blessings that we normally see when Jupiter is direct are going to be kind of on hold until Jupiter does go direct again. Not that you won't receive any abundance or blessings, but that they're kind of um, trickling out now and not full on pouring out because a lot of what's happening right now is internal manifestations, internal changes, internal growth. And so that's what Jupiter retrograde does. So I feel like Mercury making a trying to Jupiter is us being more optimistic. It's us feeling like, okay, I can see long term now, I can see how much I've evolved, I can look back in the past and, and give myself credit for how I've changed, how I've healed, how I've grown. Um, but then we have Mercury also making a square to Neptune. So it's like even though we can kind of see into the future and we feel more optimistic about it and we can see how far we've come, we also have this element of ourselves where there's still a lack of clarity. We're still not exactly sure where we're going. It's like we have a general idea, we're feeling excited, but when we try to like get down to the details of what is my life right now? Who am I gonna be with? What is my relationship with myself gonna be? How is my money gonna evolve? It's like those things are not fully within our grasp. So even though we can have that, that excitement and that long-term vision, it's that long-term vision is unclear or we don't feel like it's tangible. We don't have um, all of the information yet. We haven't fully come out of this hazy chapter, like we haven't fully integrated these lessons. We're still in this process of absorbing it and trying to understand it. So things might not feel like they're totally clear. So if you have this kind of weird relationship with someone um, and you're trying to end it or you're not sure where you guys stand, like that's the kind of energy like, okay, there's some relief, like you guys maybe made a decision if this is about a relationship. Maybe you made a decision to end or change the relationship or not pursue something or whatever, you had a conversation. But then with the Neptune influence, it's like, it's not really done yet. It's like, it's not solidified. It's not super clear where you stand with this person, but you have a general idea of where you guys are going and you feel like it's better than where it was before, but maybe it's like you're not healed yet or there's some aspect of that still needs to be fully seen later on. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, some of the big stuff that's happening is that we're gonna have Mars 
and Venus aligning in the sky and making a conjunction. So Mars and Venus are very different energies. Venus is the planet of harmony and unity and Mars is the planet of separation and of war. And so when we bring these two things in combination, it can be honestly this very intensified sexual experience. So we might have a lot more desire nature at this time. We might desire to be in relationship with people. We might want to have more sex with people. We might want to be around people um, in this really like strong, intense way than, than we normally do. Kind of like an almost animalistic drive to pursue relationships or um, a drive to pursue uh, financial abundance within ourselves uh, or financial abundance in general or peace within ourselves if we're working on a relationship with ourselves. It's like we have this fiery masculine flame kind of driving this desire for the feminine here, the uniting and the harmony. Um, what this can also do is kind of lead to maybe some more struggles in relationships and fights and things like this, especially because Venus and Mars is opposing Saturn in the sky. So it's not like we have this desire and we're given free reign to go out and pursue what we want. At the end of the day, uh, Saturn is there kind of blocking us and saying, okay, well, if you want to make progress with this, you first have to revisit all of this from the past. You have to address these weird habits that you have that you've been stuck in or you have to um, overcome this problem first before you can have the green light to go ahead and like, be with who you want or do what you want. It's like, it's hard. There's obstacles, there's delays, there's a sense of so much effort needing to be made and it feels frustrated because our, our energy is being blocked. Like Mars is our energy. So we have this energy behind us to unite, to be with people, to have sex, to work on our money relationship, our relationship with ourselves. But it's like every time we try to take a step forward, there's like this roadblock that just doesn't allow us to keep on that path. So that can be a little bit frustrating at this time. But the good news is that um, Venus and Mars is making a square to Uranus. Again, squares are not the most positive, but just the fact that it's touching Uranus here is a good sign, um, especially because this moon is making a sextile to Uranus. What this means to me is that the solution to these things is creating some sense of freedom or change or disruption to your current cycle. And it's going to feel probably like a loss. It's probably going to feel negative. It's probably going to feel like something is either being taken from you or it's harder to process than it normally is because it's a square. So anytime there is a square to Uranus, it's like it's not change that you're necessarily sitting down and really wanting to make that change. Maybe deep inside, you know, that's the change that's best for you, but it's like on the outside, you also feel like you want to be with someone and maybe you don't want to have a breakup or you want to spend that money and you don't want to sit there and budget all day. Like there's some aspect there that kind of feels like you're dragging your feet with this a little bit. But that square, if you do put that effort in to make those changes to disrupt the status quo of where things have been going, that train that's headed down the track, if you disrupt that, it's going to truly manifest in a positive way for you and have a ripple effect onto the rest of your year. Venus and Mars is also making a trine to Chiron. So I do feel like it's through this change, through these decisions and through facing these relationships with people or facing your relationship with yourself or with money, it's through that experience that you're going to have that deeper healing, that you're going to let go of some of those past patterns that you've been repeating since childhood. So that's really what came up with Venus op opposed Pluto was childhood patterns started to come up in relationships. We started to default to wanting to close down, to not open up. And now it's saying this is our chance to heal that by kind of creating a rift, by exploding what was once was, by taking a detour, by creating this massive change, we can start to rewire and rewrite history so that it doesn't just repeat itself on this in the cyclical way. So it's true healing is allowed to happen when we're doing this. And lastly, we have Saturn making a square to Uranus. This has been ongoing throughout the entire year. It's going to keep on going. So I don't really want to talk too much about it, but it's basically saying that we're just making massive, massive changes in our lives and they might feel like they're coming a little bit slower than we'd like and a little bit more frustrating than we would like because Saturn is involved. Uh, but just know that you're steadily making progress and this year is really where we're starting to lay down those big changes in our lives and into our internal selves. And then next year, I think we're going to start to see more results from them. So um, I wanted to show some cards that I pulled. So 
First, I pulled this card, the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. This is really important. And I feel like a lot of times it can feel like these negative relationship situations or money situations or self-worth situations are happening to us. They, we feel like we are victim to, to some of these, these people. I mean, if it's, a lot of it is imbalances in relationships, honestly. Um, that was occurring in the weeks prior to this that we can feel frustrated about like why am I always giving or why am I not receiving it doesn't have to just be relationships but just any area of your life where you feel like god I'm giving so much and I'm just not getting back what I what I think I should be getting back and I feel like what this is saying is this this is a very prime situation to help illustrate what you deserve and to stop falling into patterns or falling into relationships with people that don't give back what you put in it's not happening to you. It's literally happening for you. You're encountering these challenging situations and people to help you realize your worth so that from now on, you can really stand up for yourself, hold those boundaries, take your power back and start to attract the things that only match your level of giving and your vibration. I also pulled a potential card. So I feel like this is kind of going on the back of that saying that all of this is happening to build you up to your highest potential. If you didn't have these more challenging relationships and circumstances and everything was just easy going, it's like there's not enough friction to help you grow, which is Jupiter retrograde, grow inside, grow within yourself to reach a deeper and higher potential. So this is kind of um, forming us into the people that we're meant to be. I also pulled these two cards together, which is the wisdom and focus card. And I really feel like this is us being called to uh, really address where our energy is going with this focus card. You know, what are you focusing your time, thoughts, and energy on? Because the last moon that we had was a Capricorn full moon, which was asking us to grow something, which was asking us to put effort into something. And so I think that is continuing on here with this focus card. Don't give up. Keep up. Uh, keep up that endurance towards building whatever you're trying to go for, whether that's a business, a relationship, um, a move, whatever it is you're trying to bring into your life to create change, keep your focus on the prize and not on what's being lost, but what's being gained by creating more freedom in your life, by releasing things that aren't in alignment with you. And the wisdom card, I feel like, is just telling you to view this perspective from a, for, to view all this from a higher perspective. Really try to put on your thinking caps and uh, have the perspective of your future self or a really wise elder. Um, they, they're not gonna get so caught up in the details of the emotional experience that's happening right now. They're not gonna get stuck in the stories. They're gonna think about where this is taking them, why this is necessary, why this happened. Uh, really allowing yourself to reflect in a wise and self-compassionate way is gonna be important. And I feel like this five of pentacles is really illustrating kind of what we're experiencing emotionally at this time. These people are left out in the cold. They feel like they're not getting their needs met. They aren't being satisfied um, in their relationships or in some area of their life. And they're just feeling a little bit emotionally frustrated. And I feel like that's how a lot of us are feeling right now with different areas of our life. We're feeling like this sense of disappointment or, um, yeah, like like not being fully fulfilled. Like we can start to get some breadcrumbs and some things coming in into our life, but the breadcrumbs aren't enough for these people. They feel like they're still uh, frustrated with the situation that they're in. And I feel like that is where we kind of are, especially in relationships right now. And to me, the next card, the hanged one, is really this Uranus energy about creating a massive shift. This can either be in our life or in our perspective. So there needs to be some kind of shift to who we are or to what we think or to what we do. We need to turn our life upside down and shake out all of the loose change from our pockets because it's just dead weight that is not helping us. So there's, for all of us, there's some elements of our life that's that loose change that's constantly like jingling in our pockets, reminding us that we need to do something about it, but we just don't wanna take it out. We just don't wanna get rid of it because it is money at the end of the day. 
but it's just weighing you down. It's unnecessary. So even if this relationship, this job, or this thing that you're enjoying um, feels good, or you wanna hold on to it because you see some value in it, just know that it's chump change and the universe is trying to shake that out of your pockets to give you you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars and not just quarters. But you have to first make room in your life and in your pockets to receive that money to be able to do that. And that's why I feel like I pulled this Four of Pentacles card. This is us not wanting to release that change. Um, literally the change, I meant like with the money in your pockets, but literally like releasing something. Like all of us are trying to hold on to something that we no longer need to hold on to. If it's a relationship with someone, um, a hookup, a connection, something in regards to finances. I mean, that's the very obvious one with Four of Pentacles is, is desiring to hold on to those finances so that you feel the sense of security. When there is no sense of security, you create your sense of security. So holding on to this thing is only deterring the blessings that want to come in for you. And this new moon in Cancer is about releasing things, allowing yourself to create space and liberation in your life to bring in new things, and allowing yourself to feel and grieve what's happening because whenever you release something, there's some aspect of grief that also accompanies that. So if you're trying to hold on to it so you don't feel the grief, you're really just delaying your blessings, delaying the healing process, and you're not helping yourself. So let go of whatever that thing is, allow yourself to move on, and then move into the phase two of your life, which is about planning ahead. And this is what I feel like Mercury making um, that trying to Jupiter is saying is it's a great time to plan ahead. It's a great time to look into the future. It's okay if you don't have full clarity with that square to Neptune. You don't need full clarity to get started. You don't need full clarity to start journaling, to get an idea of what you want. So if you did lose a relationship, if you did let that go, now get really clear on what, what you want to come in in its place. Who does that person need to be to satisfy you? How do you need to be in the relationship to be fulfilled? Get super clear in that planning process to understand what it takes. And then the very last card we have is the strength card, which I feel like is really just telling us that the sun will shine again, but in the meantime, it's going to take our inner resilience and our strength to endure this next couple of weeks to move through these challenging situations to try to endure this five of pentacles feeling, but just know that when we come out on the other side, things are gonna be much better. So just, I think the strength card is really about that. Like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, knowing that things are going to improve and just giving yourself the opportunity to believe that things will improve. So that is what I'm seeing for this new moon in Cancer. And now I'm gonna go into all the zodiac signs if you are enjoying this so far, please like and subscribe. And if you comment down below, I just wanna say thank you so much because those comments, they mean the world to me, you guys. I read every single one and they touch my heart so deeply. And I just wanted to say thank you in advance if you are commenting. All right, up next we have Virgo rising. So for you guys, Virgo rising, this new moon in Cancer at 18 degrees is happening in your 11th house of friendships partnerships, um, sorry, not partnerships, that's the seventh house, but um, friendships, groups of people that you really feel like you belong to. Um, it's also about like your general hopes and wishes for the future. People always talk about that. It's like a lot of like long-term vision planning. Um, and I can see that. I can see you guys kind of wanting to build something with this page of pentacles that I just pulled. This new moon is also making a trying to Neptune in your seventh house. Gosh, for for so many people, I've been pulling this moon card, and that's a lot about going into the shadows of yourself, looking at the deeper emotions, and that makes so much sense with this being a Cancer moon, because what does Cancer want to do? It wants to understand itself emotionally. It needs to process things. When a Cancer isn't processing emotions, they are running, and they are overly leaning on and relying on other people. Um, for that sense of security that's supposed to come within from understanding their own emotions. And so um, I think for a lot of us, this journey is about processing and understanding our own emotions so that we can stop relying on other people and create the things that we want in our life um, from a place of being confident, from a place of knowing what we deserve um, and what we love and all that. Okay, so um, this... This new moon is making um, a trying to Neptune in the seventh. So I feel like your relationships are really benefiting this new moon. So your intimate partnership is probably feeling um, 
it's probably feeling relatively good right now. Um, I do feel like there could be some lack of clarity, especially around communication in your relationships because Mercury is making a square to Neptune in the seventh. So if you're trying to communicate or trying to understand something about your partner right now, it might not be the best time, but you also have Mercury making a trine to Jupiter there and this moon making a trine to Neptune there. So I think ultimately the feeling around your partnership is very positive. I feel like you're being supported right now. Your partner is, um, even if they don't understand everything or if you don't have full clarity around the direction of the relationship and stuff like that, it's going to feel uplifting. It's going to feel good. And you're just going to have to trust more of your intuition rather than trying to have it all figured out or rather trying to communicate everything out. Um, it's more about like feeling things together, um, expressing emotion instead of trying to like communicate all intellectually. It's like a lot about feeling, um, connecting from the heart with your partner. So I feel like that's going to be positive for you guys. Um, this moon is also making a, a sextile to Uranus in the ninth house. So, um, I feel like you guys are, are gonna, I feel like you guys might start getting like busier in terms of traveling. Um, you guys might start taking on more responsibilities that feel really exciting to you, that feel like growth opportunities. So this could be like taking a new course or, um, yes, like studying something new or, Jesus, I'm just gonna pull a card. Okay. <laughs> Um, or doing something new at work or having, having some kind of travel experience or, um, teaching experience or something where you feel like, okay, yeah, like this, this change in that area of my life is really allowing me to, um, expand. It's really allowing me to, uh, also meet other people that are supporting you that have similar interests. So if you are like going to festivals or going to certain, um, like classes or online groups, like meetups, things where you're starting to connect with other like-minded people, I feel like it's going to change you and change what you're learning, change how you're developing, but equally help you make new connections and thriving friendships that feel like they're in real alignment with who you are on an emotional level. Um, so that feels really exciting. So yeah, if you see opportunities come up right now or changes come up in terms of you're traveling, you're learning, you're teaching, your um, like desire for new experiences. If anything come, like any opportunities come up with that, take them, take them because it's gonna help you meet people that are gonna change your life for the better. You guys also have Mercury in Gemini in your 10th house and it's making a trine to Jupiter in your seventh. So um, I feel like your career area could be more of a focus right now mentally, especially with having the Queen of Wands and the Page of Pentacles. Like this is you kind of um, sitting in more of a leadership position of your life and thinking about, okay, well, what am, what am I trying to build in my career? Like, where do I see this going? And I do feel like it's definitely in your infancy with this Page of Pentacles. Whatever things are starting to come in now and ideas are starting to have percolate, desires you want to manifest, they feel like they're very much in their beginning phases. And um, it's just kind of, it's just kind of starting to trickle in a little bit here with this Mercury and Gemini. So it's like, what, what do I want to happen in my career? This feels kind of exciting. And like, how is my relationship going to support this with the trying to Jupiter in the seventh house? How are others going to help me bring this to life? Whether it's my boyfriend, where's my girlfriend, where's my best friend, whether it's my therapist, like how is this relationship going to help me bring this career into life? Um, going to help me bring this idea into fruition. And you might not have clarity around what that is going to look like yet, but I feel like the desire is there, the, the possibility, the opportunity is there, but Neptune being there is saying like, you're not going to have the full clarity around what that's going to look like as the end result, but just kind of an idea and this excitement and this opportunity around it is going to feel like enough for you at this time. You guys also have Venus and Mars combined or conjunction in a conjunction in Leo in your 12th house. And I feel like this is probably where this other stuff is coming up. Um, having Venus and Mars is like this powerhouse of energy. It's where we are desiring to break down walls, to go after what we want, to find our sexual partners, to experience the things that we desire in life. And it, being in the 12th house is very interesting. It's almost like you're going to step into some of your queen of wands or this Leo energy once you've done some 
uh, like letting go and processing. So this Queen of Wands is waiting here for you, but first you have to fully, and I feel like you already are the Queen of Wands, let's be honest, but you're going to step more into it because um, you have some stuff that is going to get in the way um, in general. The, the Moon and the Eight of Wands, this is us having us being wrapped up in our own thoughts, us having um, aspects of ourself that are uh, uh, un unintegrated shadow selves um, or fears or insecurities or emotions that we have to process where we're like, um, just, I feel like it's self-doubt about our path, you know, with Mercury, um, with Mercury in the 10th house, you can be focusing on career and wanting to manifest something there, but I feel like the lack of clarity with the square to Neptune can make you feel like this isn't um, always the right path for you or like maybe not even that. Maybe it's just like you feel like you're not where you want to be on this path. Like you want to have all that clarity. You want to have that knowledge. You want to have that wisdom, but it's just a page of pentacles. Like that's all you have right now is this, is this idea um, or this slight opportunity, this little opportunity that is going to grow into something big but isn't big yet. And because of that, it's like once you start to get that idea or get this opportunity um, as a little seedling, oftentimes what comes up on the back of that is us doubting ourselves, is us questioning can we do it if we have what it takes um, or overanalyzing things, and especially with Virgo, trying to be way too perfectionistic with it and trying to make things um, like, li yeah, like literally perfect when they just need to be good enough to like get by. Um, so I think a lot of these things you need to kind of start addressing at this time and having Venus and Mars together in your 12th house is giving you that opportunity to self-analyze, to reflect, to go within, to journal, to spend time alone in order to really sift through what is going on here and what might be holding you back from pursuing that idea further. Venus and Mars is also making a square to Saturn in the 6th house. So you might honestly have a lot of work and responsibilities and daily things that you need to keep up with um, that are kind of keeping you away from taking that time to reflect, to go within. So if that's the case, just make sure you really try to find that balance. The other thing that this could be is, again, that perfectionism. Like you're desiring to, to release these things and, and fully integrate the shadow, step into this idea and this opportunity, but that perfectionistic aspect and feeling like you're never doing good enough with that Saturn in the sixth house, it can be so self-critical. Um, so just be really aware of that. Like be really aware of taking time alone to process, but also to be compassionate with yourself and give yourself credit for how far you've come. Um, and also give yourself credit for how amazing you are of a um, amazing of a person you are, because without that, you're not going to be able to pursue this idea. So it's like you can't carry all of this weight. You can't go on your path with your uh, all these swords and you're all tied up, like you're not going to go anywhere. This person isn't going anywhere. But look at the card that follows it right after. She's completely, this is a full card. This is the very beginning of the journey here in the tarot. It's card zero. They have, um, they literally have this teeny little backpack and a little dog by their side and they've got no baggage. They're starting fresh. They, they're believing in their path. There's like this sense of optimism and, um, and I feel like that's coming from the square to Uranus in the ninth. It's like you're finally able to start making some changes to how you see your life direction going and feeling like your friends are coming to support you and feeling like this career path is going to come together. It's like, I feel like you guys have to kind of move through the bullshit with the support of those who love you around you to recognize that um, you don't need to carry this with you on your new journey, on this new path that you have coming in for you with this page of pentacles. So, um, yes, okay, let's talk a little bit about these other cards. I also pulled the don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So this can also kind of go along with your relationships here. Um, you are definitely being supported by your partnerships and your relationships, but there always can be something with Mercury making a square to Neptune, there can be something that we can't fully see in our relationships that could equally be holding us back. So on one hand, I think they're supporting you, but on the other hand, they could also be holding you back. Nothing in the world is black and white. It's like, could be 70% support, 30% holding you back. So it could be like old patterns with your partner, um, or like 
the word that came to mind was a like comfort, like this desire to be like comfortable with your partner and not uh, have to like try this new adventure. The fool card is like going after what they want despite um, all of the fears, despite um, like, yeah, basically all the fears that come up from doing something that is so different than what you're used to. It's outside of your comfort zone. They're just like going and they have their music in, they're ignoring the issues around them in the world and they're just kind of diving head first. And that's what you're meant to be stepping into with this sextile to Uranus, this new moon making a sextile to Uranus. It's like now is a time to start going after the things that you want in terms of like growth, um, pursuing that idea, pursuing that education, taking that trip because it's gonna help you grow and evolve and um, bring this pent page of pentacles to the 10 of pentacles. Um, but sometimes we get stuck in these relationships that are supportive, are loving, but are like, well, we could just stay home today. We don't have to go on that trip or we could just do this because we've done it for a year after year. We can take our same trip to that same place. And it's like, no, there's some element here of your relationships, um, you know, like you needing to be supported and re rely on other people, but also needing to recognize like where you have to stand on your own and like go after what you want and be the leader of your own life and go out of your comfort zone because your friends aren't going to make you or ask you go out, to go out of your comfort zone a lot of the times. So you're supposed to do this on your own. You're supposed to follow your ambition, be the, the leader of your own life um, or the opposite. <laughs> and um, yeah, and that's that has to come from within. So don't like overly rely on your relationships is kind of what I'm saying. Like ultimately I feel like they are really supportive, but just in general, there could be ways that you aren't able to see where you could be stuck in your comfort zone with certain people. And now is your time to expand and meet new people, have new experiences, have new learning opportunities. And so you don't want to be stuck in the same like constant with the same people. But don't ditch those people because they're there to support you. I really hope that I'm making that clear because <laughs> I feel like it's kind of contradictory and I just don't want you guys to be confused about that at all. All right, so that's what I have for you guys, Virgo Risings. If it resonates, please comment down below. I always read your messages and they mean so much to me. And if you enjoy this, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about astrology, I have an entire astrology course worth hundreds of bucks. I spent months on it and it's available for only 20 bucks a month in my membership and you can cancel anytime. And that membership is called the North Node Society and it's linked down below. So I hope that you guys join and I can't wait to see you there. Have a great day. Bye.